It is Monday, March 27th, and this is your Morning Mud. This episode is brought to you by Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative, as well as the most aptly named sponsor for this show ever, with one-seventh of the caffeine as a regular cup of coffee. It's made with masala chai, cacao, mushrooms, turmeric, sea salt, cinnamon, and that is it. And I know what you're thinking, Matt, you are somebody who loves caffeine, why would you be hawking for a company that is advertising less caffeine? And that's because it worked. It's true. I love caffeine. I used to drink two energy drinks a day, and now I might have one a week. All thanks to Mudwater. If you or someone you love might want to make the switch to Mudwater, all you have to do is head on over to muddiedwatersoffreedom.com slash mud to make the switch today. Good morning, everyone. I am Matt Wright, Editor-in-Chief of Muddied Waters Media, here to give you your morning news. I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic Monday. Um, so just so everybody knows, Sunday, March 26th, was my birthday, which means I was out doing things. So instead of giving you an episode um, with like the current things, I'm actually, uh, this, you're going to hear clips from the subscriber only episode that aired on Friday. Um, so these are two things that are actually very pertinent for today, for March 27th, uh, that I'm going to have you go, that I'm going to have on, here on the show. Um, but you will be able to hear clips from the subscriber only episode. So let's get into it. March 27th is Ross Ulbricht's birthday. Um, and as we all know, Ross Ulbricht has been in prison for 10 years now, 10 years. Uh, he went in prison October of 2013, right? 2012, 2013, 2013, um, 2012, uh, he went, he went in October of 2012. Uh, so this will be his 10th birthday in prison. Now, He went to he went to prison. He went to federal pound me in the ass prison for hosting a website. For nothing else other than hosting a website. Now people did make illegal transactions on this website and we don't have to get into the morality uh argument or you know whether or not it should be legal for people to die prostitute to be you know for people to do sex work and sex work or buy drugs or buy guns or anything like that. Take all of that off the table and take off all of that off the table. What we know is that Ross Ulbricht created a website, a commerce website where people would be free to trade good goods and services uh, without being watched by the government at the on their own with the with their own freedom making their own choices it was a completely libertarian community in this sense um and of course anytime that you have something like this bad things are going to happen but that is that's life bad things are going to happen with or without this now according to the electronic frontier foundation the internet allows people everywhere to connect, share ideas, and advocate for change without needing immense resources or technical expertise. Our unprecedented ability to communicate online, on blogs, social media platforms, and educational and cultural platforms like Wikipedia and the Internet Archive is not an accident. Congress recognized that for user speech to thrive on the internet, it had to protect the services that power users' speech. And by speech, you also have to be able to lump in users' choices. Your ideas, the things that you stand for, 
It's the freedom of your choices as well. That's why U.S. Congress passed a law, Section 230, which we all know that Section 230 is always up for debate and people are always calling for it to be changed or, you know, gotten rid of or whatever. But Section 230, originally part of the Communications Decency Act that protects Americans' freedom of expression online by protecting the intermediaries we all rely on. It states... No provider or user of an interactive computer. Sorry, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. Which means that when you post something on Facebook, on Google, on Twitter, on YouTube, on, you know, Tumblr, whatever, whatever you are posting is yours. It is not to be confused as though the fact that you posted it on Facebook or you posted it on Twitter means that Twitter or Facebook endorse these things. They are not the ones saying it. The Electronic Frontier Foundation goes on to say, Section 230 embodies that principle that we should all be responsible for our own actions and statements online, but generally not those of others. The law prevents most civil suits against users or services that are based on what others say. This means that when you say something online, they can't be in trouble for it. If you do something online, Facebook can't get sued. You do something on Twitter, Twitter won't get charged. So if somebody out there can explain to me, if somebody out there can explain to me why Ross Ulbricht was put in jail for 40 years plus two consecutive life sentences, I would be more than utterly grateful to know why that was. He didn't sell drugs. People did sell drugs on there. And the people who got caught selling drugs on there got significantly less sentences than him. Significantly less. I believe, um, let me make sure I don't have this in here before I just start guessing at things. I believe that the guy who sold the most amount of drugs on Silk Road got eight years. Eight years. Ross, 40 years plus two life sentences. He opened a website that allowed for people to voluntarily enter in commerce for goods and services that some of them were not legal. So please, why? If, if Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Google, YouTube, Alphabet, truth if they don't get prosecuted for the crimes that happen on their website and there are crimes that happen on their websites we all know about it there was child there was child porn going on on twitter for a long time and i know that right now elon's working on trying to get all of that off i know of a lot of crimes that have occurred on facebook the fbi commits crimes on facebook all the time pretending to be other people in order to entrap them by getting them to try to kidnap the governor of michigan um You know, crimes happen all the time on the social media platforms and they know about it. They ask them for the proof and they say, hey, here's the proof. There you go. The crime that Ross apparently seemingly committed was he didn't just go, oh, here you go. Here is the stuff. He also didn't let people know it was him. Um, But if they if if they aren't getting charged for the crimes, why is Ross in jail for the rest of his life? I hope you all like that. Uh, Stay tuned. We got another one coming up right after these commercials. So at the height of the George Floyd riots, protests, whatever you want to call them, July 2020. Garrett Foster, a U.S. Air Force vet, was at 
the protest in Austin, Texas, with his fiance Whitney. Daniel Perry, an Uber driver and sergeant in the Army, was driving in the downtown Austin area at 4th Street and Congress Avenue, where the protest was happening. He needed to make a right turn. He stopped on red. A group of protesters, and I know we all already know this story, but I do feel that this is, you know, we have to remind people of the details of what happened. And I wanted to show the video of this happening so bad. And I wanted to put the video on here, but I couldn't put the video on here because you can't find it online anymore. I looked so hard for that video and I didn't want to find the video, but I did want to find the video just so I could give you the play by play. So Perry was stopped at a red light, crowd of protesters crossing the street. He starts going, thinking maybe the protesters will stop. They're all like banging on the car, being like, what are you doing? As he keeps inching, he's, he keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And Garrett is at the front of the car. He's up at the front, the front quarter panel of the car. And he is, his fiance was in a wheelchair. Fiance was in a wheelchair. He's pushing her. And the guy's pushing forward, 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 um, gunning it a little bit more each time. The guy keeps pushing forward. And this is where the story gets a little convoluted, depending on who you talk to. If you talk to the Austin police, what they say is that Garrett pointed the gun at Daniel Perry. If you watch the video, which hard to find now, but if you watch the video, you see that at all times, Garrett had the gun not up against his shoulder with the barrel pointed down. It was always down away from people the international sign of i'm not aiming at you or anyone the police are saying he was open carrying an ak-47 which is legal in texas so they are sort of kind they are sort of spinning this narrative that because he was carrying the AK47 he sort of deserved it. It is the policeman's anybody who kind of wants this case to go that way. It is the FUD's reaction of if she didn't want to get raped she shouldn't have been wearing that. He was downtown at an event that could get violent, carrying a weapon, which was his constitutionally protected right, and a right also guaranteed by the state of Texas. We know three guns were out that night. I'm not going to say they, they're like three guns were pulled in Austin this night. I'm not going to say that because Garrett didn't pull his. He had it legally protected. Perry pulled his and fired multiple shots. Then another person fired at the car or around the car. I don't know if he fired at the car, fired around the car, and then Perry sped through the crowd. Perry sped through the crowd. And he uh, later called 911 to say, I shot somebody and I left them there. People can say a lot of things about what happened the summer of 2020. And most of the time, I'm going to agree. A lot of the times, the mostly peaceful protest thing that CNN did, no, most of the time, 
they were not mostly peaceful, but there were peaceful protests and there were peaceful protesters. Garrett Foster was a peaceful protester. He believed in property rights. He believed in freedom of speech. He believed that we have a right to bear arms. He believed in the Constitution. And if nothing else, if nothing else, this is a man who needs to be vindicated by the system. And even if it is a Soros-funded DA that gets that job done, I will salute that person and say, good job, because that is a man that deserved to be vindicated. So you're probably wondering what March 27th has to do with this. This was happened in 2020. And the uh, trial was set for July 26th, canceled, rescheduled, canceled, rescheduled. On March 27th, the day after my birthday, jury selection begins in the trial of Daniel Perry. It's finally happening. Nearly three years later. And I hope that whatever, whatever happens during this trial, I hope you get some semblance of closure, and I hope the rest of the Fosters get some semblance of closure, and I hope everybody who knew Garrett gets some semblance of closure over everything that has happened. Because this, this, is something we should all be fighting for, that we should all be striving for we should be fighting to be like garrett stand up for your belief fight for what you know is right care for the people that you love love the people you care for well i hope you all enjoyed that um that was a uh, that that entire episode was a really personal episode for me. The 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 subscriber episodes typically get a little bit more personal than the ones that I do Monday through Thursday. So if you want to hear that entire episode, or you want to um, you know hear the other episodes that I have put out for the subscribers, uh, all you have to do is go to Anchor dot fm slash muddied waters slash subscribe and do whatever they tell you to do right there and you can get all of the subscriber episodes new ones coming out every week uh so stay tuned you know thank you all so much and uh i have no idea how to close this out so we're just going to end it with this that is the episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you enjoy what is happening here at Muddied Waters Media, I ask you to do a couple of simple favors for us. Please, whatever podcasting platform you are listening to us on, give us a five-star review. Also, leave a review. And the biggest way that you can help is by sharing this episode with your friends. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We will see you again very soon. And remember, where we're going... We don't need roads.